Could the reason why so many equations in physics are squared represent aspects of a single truth based on just one geometrical process? The most famous of these equations is Einstein's energy equals mass times the speed of light squared and this is typical of physics equations that are squared. It is normally the speed of light and velocity that are squared. But what is significant is that the inverse square law does not just apply to Newton's universal law of gravitation it also applies to electric magnetic light. This video will put forward the idea that this is because gravity is a secondary force to electromagnetism with the whole of physics being based on one geometrical process. The unity of this process can also be seen in Einstein's relativity in the time dilation equation with the speed of light and velocity being squared and also in relativity we have Pythagoras theorem in which the three sides of a right-angled triangle are explained with the hypotenuse that is the side opposite the right angle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. The same squaring principle can be seen in quantum mechanics with the quantum wave particle function or probability function where we have to square the amplitude to get the probability. Therefore we can see there is something running through the whole of physics from the very small scale of quantum mechanics to the force of gravity and the movement of the planets. What can this something be? Could this image from the International Space Station hold the answer? In this image we can see that in near zero gravity a candle flame forms a sphere that is interacting with the environment upon the two-dimensional surface of the sphere. In the frame of reference of the candle flame the sphere is inverse with the interior of the sphere radiating out in all directions. The strength radiating energy is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source because the surface area of a sphere increases with the square of the radius. Thus the strength of the field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. Because the universe is never at absolute zero everything is radiating light or electromagnetic waves continuously. So what we are looking at here is a universal process. But if this is true we should be able to use this dynamic geometry to explain aspects of why all the other equations are squared. And we can. I will start with Einstein's famous equation energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. The energy equals mass linked to the Lorentz contraction of space and time. The Lorentz contraction represents the time dilation of Einstein's theory of relativity with energy slowing up the rate that time flows as a universal process of energy exchange or continuous creation. Light will radiate out in a sphere of electromagnetic radiation from its radius forming a square of probabilities. From within the reference frame of the candle flame this represents an uncertain future unfolding. At the smallest scale of this process this uncertainty is represented mathematically by Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. If we look at the equation explaining kinetic energy we see the energy equal half the product of the mass and the square of the speed or velocity. This is logical within this dynamic geometry. Half the product represents the radius that is half the diameter of the sphere. The surface area of a sphere increases with the square of the radius therefore it's half the product of the mass and the square of the velocity. The same mathematics representing a geometrical process can also be seen in Kepler's universal laws of planetary motion. In Kepler's second law as the planet moves along its path, it sweeps out an equal area segment in an equal time. But the planet moves faster near the sun than when it is distance. So there is a form of geometrical symmetry. But the symmetry seems to be broken by the shape of the elliptical orbit. In Kepler's third law neither the linear speed nor the angular speed of the planet in the orbit is constant. But the area speed is constant. The square of the orbital period of a planet is directly proportional to the cube of this Emil major axis of its orbit. We can think of this Emil major axis as the radius of an elliptical orbit at the orbit's two most distant points. 
If we were talking about a sphere we would have a circular orbit and this a major axis would be the radius. What is important is that this ratio is nearly the same value for all the planets of the solar system, therefore it can represent a universal process. The unity and oneness of this process can be seen mathematically with both electromagnetism and Newton's gravity sharing the inverse square law with gravity being a secondary force to electromagnetism. We see objects free falling towards the greatest energy because it has the greatest time dilation as part of a three-dimensional geometrical process with electromagnetism. The fundamental geometry of this process is spherical but the planets have broken this symmetry forming elliptical orbits relative to their energy and momentum with varying speed relative to their distance from the Sun. If the planets' orbits were circular there would be no variation in speed and we would have perfect symmetry in movement space and time. In this theory this is because the time dilation formed by the Sun is spherical therefore a planet in circular orbit will not encounter a gravitational difference that is formed by a geometrical process that is relative to time dilation. The momentum of the radiating energy from the center of a sphere is always at right angles to the surface of the sphere. This simple geometrical fact can give us a reason why electric and magnetic fields are continuously interacting at right angles to each other with a concave inner surface and outer convex surface forming a geometrical reason for charge coming into types of positive and negative. Also Pythagoras' theorem that we have in Einstein's relativity only works if you have a right angled triangle. This can be linked to the time dilation equation that we have in relativity with velocity squared representing the speed of a clock relative to an observer in another reference frame. Once again we see the speed of light squared because of this dynamic geometry. This only makes sense if we think of the universe as a continuum formed by the spontaneous absorption and emission of light continuously interacting with the atoms of the periodic table. The wave particle duality continuously forms a blank canvas that the atoms can interact with forming the possible into the actual. We have an emergent uncertain future relative to the energy and momentum of our own actions. To understand this we need to know why we square the amplitude to get the probability in the quantum wave particle function or probability function of quantum mechanics. But first if we see why we square the amplitude in classical physics it will make it easier to understand. The amplitude is a measure of change over a period of time or spatial period. This is achieved by the root mean square. This is a statistical measure defined as the square of the mean of the square of a sample. The name root mean square is simply a description, the square root of the arithmetic mean of the squares of the samples. This kind of calculation can represent a continuously varying function, value of a set of values for a continuous time wave form as in light as an electromagnetic wave. Basically there are always new photon oscillations that break the symmetry of what went before, with antimatter annihilation representing the past, and we have to square the amplitude of the wave function to find the statistical probability. As the future comes into existence with each new photon electron coupling or dipole moment, the universe is a continuum with creation being created continuously. We see and feel this process as time with the mathematics of quantum mechanics representing the physics of time as a physical process. With classical physics representing processes over a period of time as in Newton's differential equations. The future is unfolding photon by photon with the absorption and emission of light. At the most fundamental level this can be represented as a process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking. This might sound far-fetched, but quantum potential depends only on its form and not on its intensity and mainstream physics now thinks of the electron as being the most spherical object in the universe. And this dynamic geometry is the only way to explain quantum entanglement.
for the photon polarization or spin will be the same for the whole surface of the sphere having opposite spin on opposite sides of the light sphere. This is because of the nature of charge. A spherical charge will have the same charge at the center as it has on the outer surface. The light photon is the carrier of charge with the continuous flow of electromagnetic fields. Light also has momentum and momentum is frame dependent therefore we have a universe made up of an infinite number of dynamic reference frames that are continuously interacting coming in and out of existence. Each reference frame has its own timeline from the past into the future with a potential uncertain future unfolding photon by photon with the movement of that charge. We have this potential because there are an infinite number of lines symmetries within a sphere that in this theory represent an infinite number of potential future timelines that form an infinity of possibilities. Because of this process life will only ever be an infinitesimal potential of what it could be and that will always be so. The uniqueness of every sunset with the diversity and uncertainty of life can only be created out of a potential infinity of possibilities with creation being in the hand and eye of the beholder. Thanks for watching. Please share, subscribe and rate it will help the promotion of this theory.